Hello, folks. My name is Edwin, and today we are recording this Zero to Hero Git on Windows tutorial for RespiraWorks. The plan today is we're going to take this computer with a completely new um, install of Windows, nothing but uh, Windows and Zoom here, um, and we're going to set up Git together. So the intention is um, at the end of this hour, hour and a half tutorial, um, if we all follow along with this tutorial. By the end of it, you will have installed the uh, you will have copied the repository to your computer. You will have uh, the Git tools installed. You will have SSH credentials, uh, and we'll walk through making your first contribution um, to the project, which we call a merge. So um, we're going to walk through it. We're going to start completely from zero um, and give you the tools that you will need to contribute to this project. For those of us who are joining us from elsewhere, RespiraWorks is a 501c3 uh, nonprofit organization dedicated to designing and distributing open source medical devices, uh, right now ventilators and respirators. And if you're interested, you can find us at respira.works. You can learn more about the project, join our team, or donate uh, here on this webpage, respira.works. Thank you very much. So we'll start by going to our GitHub page. So we can actually get to that from the website. Just click the GitHub button at the top right. And this just takes you to github.com slash RespiraWorks. And uh, GitHub is where we store and collaborate on our project. So today we'll be cloning the ventilator repo. That's the one we're gonna be working on. Uh, and we'll, um, here you can find our wiki, which includes uh, all of the information that you need to get started. And this is where, uh, this is gonna be our jumping off point for this tutorial. Um, so here, this includes information about joining our project, who to contact to get added to our communications um, and how to get started with Git. So I encourage everyone to start here on this page and read through this wiki page. Um, the most important part that we're gonna be following here is the Git workflow. And this talks about how we use Git at RespiraWorks. This is a standard uh, branch merge process that a lot of other organizations use um, to make changes atomically, piece by piece, um, to make and approve changes to this uh, to the rep repository. Um, so we're going to first go. Um, so this is definitely worth reading through, and we'll go through this uh, at the end once everything has been installed. So going back up to our table of contents in our wiki, uh, we're gonna go to Git setup. And uh, here's the process for Windows users and we'll go through this step-by-step. Step. So let's start here. So recommended actions for Windows users before installing Git. And so these are a few Windows specific uh, actions that will help. So if we go to our file explorer, click those three dots and go to options. So this is, it's, it's uh, on Windows 10, you'll find a view menu here. Um, on uh, Windows 11, it is these three dots. Options, view, and we're going to unclick hide extensions for known file types. And this will give us access to the extensions of files. Okay, and we can go ahead and close that window. Um, then install a text editor so you can select it during the Git installer wizard. And we recommend using Notepad++. It's a great uh, feature-rich text editor. Now, real quick, there are a couple different versions of Notepad++ depending on what type of system you have. For Windows users, right-click on the Start button and go to System. And this will tell you um, what type of a system you have. So system type here, 64-bit operating system, x64 based processor. So for Notepad++, we're gonna download the 64-bit version. If you find x86 stated there in your system menu, um, then you'll be downloading this one. So let's go ahead and download. And we'll open it. Okay. Could just install this with all of the default settings. 
Okay, we'll finish that and get a little preview of what Notepad++ looks like. All right, and we'll be, we'll be seeing this again. Okay, we'll go ahead and close that window and find the next step. Now we'll install Git locally. Uh, just a quick uh, note about terms. Uh, Git is the actual software that does the version control on your computer. And GitHub is a, is a service in the cloud which allows us to all share our actions in Git. So Git is basically the tool that you use and GitHub is the service. And it's also where all of our work is stored and shared online. Um, and all of this will make sense if you understand that distinction. Um, so for us, we're on Windows today and we're gonna download and install Git for Windows. And a quick note, um, you wanna find Git for Windows. This is gitforwindows.org. If you click the link um, in that, um, in that wiki page, you're not going to go wrong. Um, there's also a Git desktop app, and that's not what we're trying to install here. So let's go ahead and download and install that. You can tell how fresh this uh, Windows computer is because we're still using Microsoft Edge. Go ahead and open that. And here we can just install with all of the default options except for one. And we're gonna, we're gonna see it here in just a moment. Here, choosing the default editor used by Git. Um, those of you who use Vim, if you like it, you know who you are, everyone else, get the heck out of Dodge. Um, we're gonna select Notepad++ as Git's default editor, which we just installed. Okay. So all of these can be installed with the default settings. Okay, and I'll just go back to the wiki page while, uh, while that installs. Oh, so a word about Bash here. So uh, Bash is the command line utility for interacting with Git. It's how you will tell Git what you want it to do. Um, and there are a few tips here on how to use Bash. Um, all, all users, Windows, uh, Unix users will have access to Bash. Um, and for Windows users, if you're trying to, to get to Bash, you can just right click from any Explorer window uh, and start a Bash window. Um, you can use tab to auto-complete a command. So if you've entered half of a file name, um, press tab and the rest of it will complete. That's very convenient. Uh, and you'll see that as we as we work with it. Um, the up arrow will bring up previously used commands, also useful to repeat a command you did before. Um, okay. So let's see if Git is done installing. And we're actually going to have it not open up uh, Bash so that we can see how Bash gets open. So, so I'm going to go ahead and in my documents folder, create a new folder called projects. This will just help me keep all of my, uh, keep all of my repositories organized. And so from here, I can right click, show more options. If you're in Windows 11, in Windows 10, you should just be able to see this, git bash here. And voila, we have our first introduction to the Bash interface. So the first thing we're going to do is tell Git who we are. So our first, um, first action here is to run these commands. In this case, git config dash dash global dot uh, user dot name. And in quotes, put in our name. Okay, then we'll do the same global user dot email Okay, and now we've introduced ourselves to git. Um, for Unix users, you'll install git LFS here. Windows users won't need to do this because git LFS is already installed. Uh, with Git for Windows. Um, again, here are instructions in the wiki. If you did not already, uh, if you installed Git before you installed Notepad++, 
Notepad++, you may not have installed it as your default editor. So here is a command. Again, you can do this in git bash uh, to set Notepad++ as your default editor. But we won't need to do that because we did it during the installation. OK, now at this point, if you haven't already gotten a GitHub account, um, you will go to github.com and create a new account. Okay, so I'm going to use my Spearworks email here. Okay. Okay, we have a fun little puzzle here to prove that we're human. Okay, that's fine. And so I will go to my Respira Works email account. Okay, you'll receive a verification code to I think we can just click the link here in that email to verify the account. Oh, nope, looks like we're going to have to copy it directly. So we'll do that. Oh, that animation is new. OK, great. And so um, at this point, um, it would be good to let one of us know, one of us um, on the uh, RespiraWorks team know that you've created a GitHub account so we can add you to the repository. So um, what would happen now is, um, so our, our repository is public, so anyone can download it. But in order to make contributions, you know, to, to upload and merge your own changes to the project, you will need to be a member of the um, of the of the RespiraWorks organization on GitHub. So, um, so let's just pretend that I just emailed myself and said, "Hey, I created my new GitHub account. This is my GitHub username, Edwin Respira. Um, please add me to the project." Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and that will give me access to both read and write to the repo. And uh, anyone who's watching this uh, tutorial for another project on Git or GitHub. Um, you would message the, the owner of whatever project that is. And once that has gone through, you'll receive an email. So if I go back to my email interface here, aha, uh -huh, here we go. So here um, I've received an invitation to join RespiraWorks. Go ahead and confirm that. And now I'm in the organization. Great, if you already have a GitHub account, um, just let one of the admins know um what your username is and we'll add you to the project then the next step will be to configure our ssh keys to authenticate with github so in order to do that um we're going to use the github instructions for this there's some information about ssh and then um, generating a new ssh key and adding it to the ssh agent is what we are going to do There's a note here to tell you to uh, define an SSH uh, passphrase. This helps secure your SSH key. You should definitely do this. Okay, so we're gonna do this from git bash. So let's go back to our window here. And git bash here. 
And we're going to use this command here, ssh egen dash t ed25519 dash c, and then my email. You'll use your email here. ED25519 is the algorithm for generating the key. Okay, uh, enter a file in which to save the key. And so in this case, we're gonna use the complete default for this. Um, so just go ahead and click enter to accept the default, um, the default location. And then um, it will ask you to create a passphrase and enter it again. Okay, so now uh, if we go to this location, we can find our uh, public and private SSH keys. They come in a pair. Your private key, you should always keep to yourself and your public key will let other sites like GitHub uh, authenticate your user. So um, let's go ahead and go through this. Yep, we've done this, we've done this. Um, we put it in the default location with the default file name and we've created a passphrase. So the next step is to add that SSH key to the SSH agent. Uh, so we can use this command here. So going back to bash, uh, we will first start the, uh, start the SSH agent, eval, quote, dollar sign, SSH. Agent, you only have to do this once. Uh, after we've done this, and uh, confirm that the key is working, um, we will make a we will put a, a bash script in to automatically do this every time. And so you you won't have to enter these commands again. We're just doing this once. So eval uh, quote dollar sign parentheses ssh dash agent space dash s close parentheses close quote. It gives us a PID to tell us that it's running then we're gonna do this SSH add. Okay, tilde just means, uh, refers to your home directory. Um, and then we're gonna look for the dot SSH folder. And here's where I'm gonna use that tab uh, feature of bash. So I've, I've typed in dot S and the only folder in that uh, location is the, with the dot S as the first two letters is dot SSH. So if I press tab, um, it auto completed and I pressed tab again and it, there was only one folder in there. So it uh, auto completed with the name of that folder, right? Okay, it's gonna ask me for my passphrase again. Okay, and now it's been added. And I think, that's it. Now we go to the next step, which is adding your SSH key to your GitHub account. So we're going to do this through the browser. Um, let's first find our SSH key. So in this case, it is C users, my username dot SSH. And here is my key and my public key. Okay. So we'll copy the SSH public key to the clipboard. So in this case, we're gonna use our handy notepad plus plus, right click, show more options in Windows 11. Um, in Windows 10, you'll just be able to see this and click edit with notepad plus plus, which will bring up the file in notepad plus plus. Simply copy this information. and return it to GitHub. Okay, so let's go ahead and sign in to the GitHub account. All right, now in our, um, in our GitHub account and the right side, uh, 
user menu. We're going to go here to settings and SSH and GPG keys. So what we want to do, uh, if, if you have a fresh account, you won't see any keys here. This will be blank um, and you'll have the opportunity to add a new key. So go ahead and give your key a descriptive title. I like to use the date that it was added. So today is the 16th. And my username. Okay, and we'll go ahead and paste from the clipboard um, the key that we generated and click add SSH key. Great, now you'll see this key has been added. Okay, returning to the GitHub SSH tutorial. Okay. Now go, we'll go back and testing your SSH connection. So what we're gonna do is go back to Git bash. and enter this ssh dash capital t git at github.com hit enter and then we'll go ahead and accept okay and it says hi my username you've successfully authenticated but github does not provide shell access that's what we want to see um, that means that your git your github key uh, SSH key is working. Great, so now we could return to our Git setup wiki page uh, at RespearWorks. Um, the next step, uh, if you are, so if you're a Windows user here, um, the SSH credentials will go away. So if you're using Git for a while, it may ask you to uh, start the SSH agent and add the SSH key over and over again. And to prevent this from happening, um, we can make it so that the, every time the, the bash script starts up, it will uh, start the SSH agent and uh, load your keys. So um, this convenience script is provided and we're going to add it to our SSH, uh, sorry, our, our bash RC file. So in order to do this, um, we're going to create a bash RC file. So we're going to change directories to our um, tilde. So tilde means your uh, user home directory. And we're going to go touch dot bash RC to create the bash RC file. And then what we can do is open that file in text editor. So going back to my user folder, so this is C users, and then for me, it's INSEP, um, just my uh, my username. And now there is a bash, .bash RC file. We can edit that again in notepad++. And we're just gonna paste in that text from the wiki. You can just click this button here, which copies it. and paste. We'll go ahead and save that, close it. And then we're gonna restart git bash. So I'm gonna close both of my git bash terminals here. And oops, click between files here. Okay. Um, it will ask me for my uh, passphrase for my keys and add my identity. So now um, pressing the up key to, uh, again, this is another one of those bash tips. You can use the up key uh, to recall uh, previous commands and the down key as well to go uh, back to the newer commands. And I'm just going to go back and find that SSH-T, test that connection, 
and yes, it uh, it is working. So great. Now that we've installed that script, uh, it's going to uh, make things a lot easier for us in Windows. Okay, congratulations. We've now made it to the point of installing, um, of cloning the repository. So now we are ready to clone the repository, uh, which makes a local copy of the um, of the, of our work on GitHub for you to edit and work on. And so at this point, um, it's a good idea to talk about the branch merge workflow. So uh, there's a reminder here to go back to look at our contributor workflow um, and talk about how we do this. So the reason we do this is to make each change, each contribution that a, um, that a member of the team makes should be a separate, right? So that if people are working on different things, they don't get conflated together. And if, if there's a problem and we need to roll back one of the changes, we can do we can roll back just that change and not everything else. And so in order to do that, um, we use something called branches. And so what branches does is on your local computer, you will make a branch of the repository, which is a separate local copy of the repository uh, in which you will make your changes. So first we will clone the entire repository and then we will start making changes on a branch. Um, that branch can also be uh, committed and pushed to the cloud. So that branch will also show up on GitHub, but it remains separate from the main, um, the, the main master branch of the repository. And once you're done making your changes, what you can do is uh, we will submit a pull request or a PR. And what that means is you've created this branch, you've made your changes in that branch, and you are now asking for those changes to be pulled into the master branch of the project. And when you do that, um, you will get one of your peers to check your work. Um, there'll be an approval process so that you can have another pair of eyes on it. And there's a bunch of automated checks. And so once those, all of those checks have passed, only then can you merge your changes into, into the master project. And what's great about this system is it allows us to look at each change one at a time and make sure that, that we're really doing what we need, that we need to be doing and that it actually addresses the feature or bug that we're trying to address uh, before it goes back into the main project. So um, what we're gonna do now is clone the repository and walk through the entire process uh, of making a change and making a PR and asking for it to be uh, merged back into the main project. So um, let's go ahead and Go back to the repository, going back to our git setup um, wiki page. So we will, so for, uh, for Unix users, if you didn't install git LFS, uh, you should do that now. Uh, for Windows users, that was already installed uh, with, um, with git for Windows. So we'll go ahead and copy this command and in our bash window, um, now uh, actually in, in this case, let's navigate to the folder that we want to use. In this case, I put it in my documents folder for easy, um, for easy, easy access. So let me find, Okay. And I created this projects folder. You can put this anywhere you want on your computer. I just put it um, inside and I'm using tab again to, to auto complete these commands. Uh, I'm just gonna put this inside of my documents projects folder. It just makes it easy to find. So navigate to the folder that you want to put the repository in. It should be something that you can easily get to. Um, and then I'll go ahead and paste that command and hit enter and it will start cloning the repository. And this will just take a moment as it downloads the, the cloud repository to your local machine.
Okay. And now if we navigate to that folder, you can see I now have the entire project at my disposal. So at this point, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone another repository and show you the branch merge procedure on that repository. So we're not actually making changes to the ventilator at this point. Um, but in this case, um, this the entire ventilator project is now on your computer. And this is where you will be working from. But in this case, I'm going to git clone using that same um, using that same command, and then I'm going to get the git address for that for that repository. So in this case, we're going to go to RespireWorks, um, the git tutorial sandbox. This is where uh, I will be showing you the branch merge procedure. So click the code, the green code button, and we're going to copy this git address here. Git clone. There's the address. Okay, now I'm going to uh, CD for change directory. I typed in git and then tab, which auto completed the rest of that folder name. And now I'm inside the git tutorial sandbox. Uh, now we're going to go to uh, another page here. So under at, at the wiki page at the bottom, uh, after cloning the repository, there's a, there's a title that says what's next. And that takes you to the git cheat sheet, which is full of useful git commands. So in this case, what we're going to do is create a new branch. So we have the uh, Git sandbox, Git tutorial sandbox, and we're going to make a change to it. Uh, and we're gonna do that by making a branch. Um, if you make any changes on master, you will not be allowed to, um, you will not be uh, allowed to push them. So uh, just, just a quick warning, if you forget to do this and you start making your changes on the master branch or the main branch, you uh, you will not be able to commit those changes and you will have to reproduce that work in a branch. That is a rule that we've set up so that we don't make unintentional changes to the project. Um, so just, just a word of caution there, uh, always remember to make a new branch before you start doing your work. So in this case, we're gonna use this command, git checkout dash B, and then we're gonna have a new branch name. Um, and at this point, uh, I should mention issue tickets. So issue tickets are a way to organize your work on, um, on, any, on any Git project. And most of the time, when you're making changes to, uh, to a repository, when you're making a branch, you are usually doing it in response to some issue. So either an issue could be a request for a new feature, or it could be a, um, or it could be a bug that someone found. Right, so um, let's create a new issue in this case. And then uh, let's say in this case, it was a feature and I'm gonna give it a title and a second poem to the uh, readme. Okay. So here we'll just have a, um, Usually there'll be a, a description of what needs to be done. So in this case, um, in this case, we're adding poems to the readme file. Okay. And there are extra checklists and things here to help you uh, remember all the steps to, to, uh, to do this. So let's just create that issue. That issue will be assigned a number and the issue can also be assigned to a person. And so in this case, um, we're just gonna assign ourselves. So now we have issue number four. And so let's say we are working on an issue and we're now ready to work on this issue. We're gonna create a new branch to work on it, right? So in this case, we, uh, we typically give the branch name, the issue name. So in this case, this is issue four, add poem, and then, and then add uh, some descriptive uh, name to this so that it's, it's clear what's being done. So um, that's just human readable. Okay. And 
as per the Git cheat sheet. So we're going to hit enter. Uh, so here, um, once you've done this, then you should make sure to do a Git pull so that your starting point is as up to date as possible. Uh, so we'll do this. Oh, um, sorry, Git pull should have been done first so that we are in. So let's. Um, so if we were to do this correctly, we should do first a git pull. Um, and, then, and then you would do your git checkout dash B. Um, in this case, since we just cloned the repo, um, that is just fine. It's fully up to date. But anytime you're starting, um, starting a new branch, you should do this um, git pull first in case anything has changed in the meanwhile um, so that your branch starts at the, at the most up to date. Um, up-to-date version of the main project. Okay. So now that we've created this, um, now that we've created this, um, this new branch, we should associate it on GitHub. So what we're going to do is do a, uh, let's see, I think we can do a git push here. And it will give us um, a recommendation here. It'll say, okay, this, this doesn't work because it has no upstream branch. So the, you, can remember this, you can remember this command or the quick way to do is just say git push and it will tell you, no, you should actually do this. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and copy this command here. And you only have to do this once for a new branch. Okay, and now, uh, this, uh, now this branch has been pushed to, um, to GitHub. So if we go to our Git tutorial sandbox online, we'll see that, um, this issue for add poem, uh, has been, uh, is now present in the GitHub online, as well as on our local machine. Right, so now we are set up to, to make changes. So uh, let's go to this folder, Git Tutorial Sandbox. And let's see, let's go ahead and edit the readme Here's a nice poem. And let's go ahead and find a poem to add. Okay, and we'll just take the we'll we'll take the poem of the day. Let's get the whole thing here. Okay, in this case, I'm gonna use the block quote feature so that I'll put it inside a little formatting block and save this file. So this is a readme.md, this is a uh, markdown file. So uh, if you're familiar with markdown, you can use all of the markdown formatting um, uh, syntax here. And we won't go through that in this tutorial. Um, but uh, just so you know that that can be used. Okay, now uh, if we want to, we can, uh, let's go ahead and commit that change. So uh, going back to our Git, um, our, our Git cheat sheet here, um, we need to add the changes that we, um, that we made, uh, we need to stage them for commit. So commit, what that means is it means to, um, to make a record of that change on, uh, on your repository. So in this case, we're inside this repository on our local machine on the branch issue four add poem. Now we're going to commit that change and make a record of it. So in this case, uh, I'm gonna do git add. Um, 
And you can use dash A to add all untracked changes. However, sometimes when you're working in say like a CAD program and it creates a bunch of unnecessary files, you don't want to add all of those. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to add the specific file, the readme. Uh, hey, if I may interrupt for a second. Go ahead. Uh, to, to illustrate one thing, I would recommend let's do a git status so we see sure. what's where we are at this point. Yeah. Um, I like to do git status often to see. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Martin. So let's go ahead and run git status. And this shows us what has changed since the last time this was committed. Right. In this case, we see that we modified this file, readme.md. So, um, but it, but we haven't we haven't staged this file for commit, so it's changed, but we haven't said that hey we want to make this part of this change record. So what we're going to do is now a git add using the tab tip again to auto complete that file name, and now if we do a git status, we can see that this change is now staged for commit. We haven't committed it yet, but now it is. We've identified this as part of the commit. So now what we can do is git commit, and then we'll use dash m for message. We have a rule on our uh, on our GitHub project that no commit can be made without a um, without a message. This this just means that when you look at the log of changes, there's a description of what each change is, and that just makes it more human readable when someone has to go in there and see what was being done. Um, and there's one extra useful feature here, which I will show you. Um, so here, if I put the pound sign and reference an issue ticket, this will automatically update that issue ticket and say, hey, this commit is associated with it. So if I go ahead and make this commit, and if I push this, so now, now the command is on my local machine. And by running a git push, I will actually tell it to then update, send that change record, send that change to the issue four branch online. Uh, I would. Yes. Let's do another git status so we see sure. see where we at. It's, it's always good to do yep. git status. So. So here we see we have one change on this branch um, and nothing to commit. So there are no other changes in the branch. So basically what this means is what we, what we have, the changes we have committed is everything that we have visible right now in our local, local branch. But the server doesn't know about it yet. So the other contributors are not aware of that change yet. So it's, it's been packaged up but it hasn't been shared with everyone else. So what push is going to do is it's going to share it with everyone else. Exactly. So now I'm gonna do a git push and take this change from my local machine and send it to um, send it to GitHub. And so now a few things have changed. So let's go, let's go to um, back to our git tutorial sandbox. We'll see that, hey, uh, there's a notification that issue four add poem had recent pushes. Uh, and if we go to issue for add poem, you can also reach it from the branch menu here. We will see that this version of the readme has the poem added. Right. If we go back to if we go to the main branch, we notice that this isn't changed. So nothing nothing has changed in the main branch. It's just that um, it's just that branch. And now this is visible to everyone. It's also backed up online. So if your computer falls in the lake. Um, all of your changes are preserved here and you can reproduce them on any other machine. Um, and so can any of your colleagues if they want to check out the changes that you've made. Um, and then one last thing is on issue number four, there's now a note that this commit referenced this issue. And this is a good way to stay organized and you can see all the commits that uh, contribute to working on a particular issue. Okay, so now let's say we've completed the work that we intended to do, right? So um, what this means is that we've um, we've done what this issue asked us to do, uh, and 
we're now ready to say, hey, we want someone to look at this and decide if this is ready to be merged into the main, uh, into the main repository, the main branch of the repository. So if we go back to the main uh, page online on GitHub for this project, you'll see that there is now a button that says compare and pull request for the, uh, for the branch that we just pushed to. Um, and what, again, what a pull request is, you're basically saying, hey, these changes are ready. Uh, I would like to ask those changes to be pulled into the main branch. So if you don't see this, so this, this will show up if you had a recent push, but if other things have happened on the repo or there's been some time, um, this button won't necessarily appear. So we're actually gonna do this in a different way, um, which will essentially do the same thing as clicking this green button. If you see this green button for your branch, you can go ahead and click it. Otherwise, we'll go to pull requests. We'll say, create a new pull request. And here, for the compare branch, we're gonna pick the branch that we're making a pull request for. And this is the same interface that you'll see if you had clicked this compare and pull request button on the main page. So we'll go ahead and click this. Let's give it a descriptive name. Read me. Okay. And then here you'll enter in a summary of changes. I'm going to skip this for time. Um, and again, here's one of those very useful automatic um, linking features in GitHub. Here you can enter either updates and an issue number or closes and an issue number. And so if you put this issue number here, um, when, um, when, this, when this pull request gets approved and merged, it can either put a notice on that issue that something has changed or it can completely close the issue. So in this case, since this completes the task, um, completes the task uh, of issue number four, if I just put this, um, this line here, whoops, closes, capital C closes, and then pound sign and your issue number, now we'll see when this actually, when this has been approved and closed, um, it will also close that issue ticket, which is very convenient. So we'll go ahead and say create pull request. And you'll see that there's also a convenient checklist to go through here to make sure you're doing all the steps uh, to ensure that your PR is ready. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's see, so self review, let's go through the files change tab. And this is useful to look through and make sure that only the changes you intended to make are here. If there are other files or if this doesn't look right, then you'll need to make some changes in your, um, in your branch before asking for it to be merged. Okay, so that's done. So if, you, if there's documentation that needs to be updated to reflect your changes, then you would do that. We edited the readme file, so that is its own documentation. Um, we want to follow, we have a documentation style guide for RespiraWorks. You'll want to make sure that you follow that. Um, new content is linked. It should be easily discoverable and not require too many clicks. So if you make a new file um, and there's no way to find it, um, then it's not actually useful. So that's a good check, right? Follow parts of the contributor wiki, which is what we've been going through uh, and making this PR is part of that. Make sure this PR is a descriptive name so that when someone is reviewing it, they know what they're looking at. Um, and finally, we should tag a reviewer. So in this case, I'm going to uh, tag one of the admins. This one happens to be me. Um, oh, you can tag me. I, we can we can yeah. oh, excellent. pull off a, a whole uh, interview. I mean, a review process thing. It, yeah. It's a literally a tag team. <laughs> so I'm going to tag you, Martin, Yeah. as the reviewer. So he shows up there. OK, and we've done that. I'm going to skip these other checklists, these checklists are here to help with um, making sure that your contribution uh, is solid. Okay. Uh, should, should I screen share and, and review and then we pass it back and forth and then we yeah. merge it? Like, just, so, like, just like it should be, yeah? Perfect, so let me, let me talk to this really quick. Um, so you'll see that we have, we have rules in our repository that um, 
pull requests that have not been reviewed and approved cannot be merged. And so you'll see that merging is currently blocked here. And we also have a number of automated checks. So if you're looking in the ventilator repo, um, you know, when you're making a PR, you will see um, several automated checks here, especially if you're doing code. Um, we have uh, continuous integration checks. And if those checks have not passed, this merging will also be blocked. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna stop the share here, turn it over to Martin and uh, show you the review process on the reviewer's end. All right, uh, let me go. All right, here we go. Uh, can you see that all right? Yes. Okay, so um, actually I'm gonna assume that I don't know about any of this. So I have just opened up my GitHub and there's stuff happening here, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff happening here, but I have this little thing here. I have unread notifications. There's something maybe important for me. And if I go to my notifications, it looks like uh, I have a new a review requested. So I've I, someone's requested a review from me, a new poem on Git tutorial sandbox. Okay, let's see what's up with this. Okay, Edwin Respira has requested my review. Okay, I guess I should I should do something about that. So I'm going to read what's going on. It says summary of changes, relevant motivation and context, dependencies. Okay, it closes ticket four. Let's look at ticket four. And this is what uh, what this ticket, what this merge request is purportedly solving. And it says, readme needs a new poem. What is required? Add a poem to the readme and the subtasks. Uh, okay, they have, been, have not flushed out, but okay. From what I see, the contents of this a poem must be added to the README. So let's see what actually happened here. Uh, there is one commit and there is one file change. Let's look at the file change. This looks like a poem. Uh, this looks uh, satisfactory. Uh, but let's see if if uh, if I can if I can think of anything that could re re improve this. Right. Let's see if if. Um, Let's see, I don't know, maybe there should be like a space before before the, the actual paragraph starts. You know, this this is really stupid, uh, but you know, maybe that's maybe it's a it's a good so I'm gonna say uh maybe leave uh one blank line before the poem starts. That's gonna be my suggestion here. Uh let's see it. And it says pending here, so so I have not submitted this review yet, yet. So I can kind of go around and see if there's anything else that I can do. Uh, let's see. There's. It's, let me read this poem a little bit. Ooh, there's a weird character here. Um, uh, maybe I'll say, uh, you know, um, have you ever tried doing this? Add a suggestion. Okay, I'm gonna suggest that this this weird character here. I don't know. We're not Danish. We don't use letters like that in English. Let's. Let's change that to a, to to how you would spell Caesar normally. So that's going to be a suggest, suggested change. And that's also still pending. Let's see what, what else uh, can I do. Um, I think I think this is fine. Uh, maybe maybe I didn't like something about this. I and I can uh, maybe I feel very emotional about this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add. I'm going to be angry here with my comment. Don't be angry with your comments. But so here, you know, I've I've changed it a little bit before I'm submitting it. Um, okay, maybe I changed my mind. Maybe I I don't I don't want to be angry like that. Okay, um, I have self control. I'm not three years old. Okay, so the uh, I think I'm happy with this review, and I'm going to request these changes. I'm we're not going to merge those changes until until the author does something about my suggestions. I'm going to say uh, pretty good good but could be better okay uh so here is my review i have submitted my review and there's the suggested change and okay that's that's it let's okay i'm and now now that this has happened i think edwin should have a notification that he got a review so if you if you also install like a github app on your phone you'll also get notifications when stuff is happening so um, yeah, i think I, I just i just felt my phone buzz all right, back to you then. Yep, so we'll go ahead and switch back to my screen. Thanks, Martin. And here we can see uh, in the notifications,
we go and click on this README, uh, I can see that, hey, some changes have been requested here, right? So it says, oh, maybe there should be a poem, there should be a uh, extra line here, and um, we can change this. So here I can actually commit the suggestion right away. So I can take uh, the reviewer's suggestion and commit it right uh, right into the right into the branch. So uh, we we'll always need to to have a message. So let's say let's say uh, accept Martin's spelling suggestion in PR. And again, you can just link PR number five here. Um, and by adding a pound in the, the PR number, it will be automatically added to the, um, it will be automatically added to the, to the PR record. So I'm gonna go say commit changes here, right? Um, and you'll see, oh, look, huh, that, uh, that commit here is now referenced in the, uh, in the PR. Now we should also resolve this one. So let's see, okay, I need to add a blank line before the poem starts. So let's go back to my uh, local, uh, local repository. I'm in the issue four branch. So let me go, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Let's open, I want git bash, don't need this. Uh, let's go open git bash. Okay, and let's do a git status. And what we're gonna do is uh, there have been changes to this on, uh, on the online version of it on GitHub. So what we want to do is just to see if we're up, up to date, we're gonna do a git pull. Uh, and in this case, we'll see that, oh, there have been changes and that change the, the, um, the spelling suggestion that I accepted um, has now been downloaded and is that change is now present in my local repository. And the reason we want to do this is if that if there has been another change elsewhere in in my branch and I start working on it without first downloading that change, there will then be a conflict that I have to resolve. And so it's always a good practice to do a git pull if you think there is any chance that something may have changed if you have done something in the online interface or if um, or if somebody else is collaborating with you on the branch, always do a git pull. Um, and if there's nothing to update. Uh, this is what it will look like. It'll tell you that you're already up to date. Um, but if there is something to update, you will save yourself a bunch of time resolving your conflicts. So now if we go ahead and open this readme, and we'll do that in Notepad++ again. Oh, it says that I, I had this open already and it says it's been modified and do we want to reload it? Yes. So let's look and let's see if that changed. Oh, look, yeah, that spelling change has been incorporated. So now we're just gonna, uh, make the change that was suggested, save the file, do a git status again. We'll see, okay, there's, there's, the, there's the modified file. We're gonna add it. Okay. Its status shows that it is now staged and ready to commit. And we're gonna use the git commit command and we'll add a message. Uh, let's see, uh, adding a line break to poem per PR number five. Okay, and I'll say, go ahead and hit enter. And now the last step is to do a git push. So that's that commit's been made on my local machine. I'll now do a git push to push it to GitHub. And now in my pull request, we'll see, oh, that commit has now been referenced as well. And I can go back to um, Martin's comment here and say, hey, thanks. This has been added. And he'll receive a notification of that comment. And I think I can click resolve here, right? 
yeah, right. so this depends on how we, how we do it. Sometimes you want to leave that up to the reviewer to, to resolve. Sometimes you can resolve it yourself if it's something small. In this case, uh, this is kind of a leave it to the reviewer. Yeah, uh, and you can also re-request the review at this point to then uh, also um, show how that works, right? Yep. So uh, let's see. I'll go ahead and click this little uh, cycle icon next to my reviewer's name, and he will get a notification that says, "Hey, go look at this again. Something something has changed." So I might have said, "Oh, I disagree with this. I think we should do this another way," or I can say, "Hey, I've done it. Um, check this out." So I've stopped my share now. If you want to show what that looks like on your end, okay. Uh, uh, let's do this again. All right, we're back, uh, back here, and I was like, I got new notifications here. Oh, the, the review requested again. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, what's going on here? Oh, okay. I was in a request to. I wonder why it took me to that thing, but uh, should it not have? Uh... Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's because I had it open already, I think. So, okay. So it took me back to this thing. And uh, Edwin Respira has requested a review again. Uh, so I will look over this and this, he has added this. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm happy with this. So I'll say this is resolved. And and I will look at the changes here. And interestingly enough, now we also have three three commits here. So I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm curious about how this evolved. So I'm gonna see what happened here. So the first commit looks like added, added this poem. Then I can look the next commit. This was my edit that was accepted. So it says um, co-authored by me also. So I my, my name is now in the in the record as having authored a piece of this change as the reviewer. And so, um, and let's see what else happened here and added a line break. And so you can see the cool thing about something like this, this one here, this is, this is where you see like the power of Git is it tells you exactly, especially with text files, what exactly it says. So red means something was removed, green means something was added. And specifically it even highlights the specific word that was modified. Um, so, okay, I, I see exactly what has happened here with all of this and, and I'm happy. So I'm going to add my review and I will say approve. And uh, sometimes we say looks good to me is, is a thing that, that reviewers say. Uh, and now every, everything is good. Oh, there is also some sort of a checks. Let's, let's see, there is, there is an automatic check here. So this is something you may also see. Uh, there's there's some pre-programmed scripts that check for, for validity of, of things. And then there's, here's some scripts that are run uh, on this, uh, on the cloud where they uh, grab all the information and they, they check that the, uh, that everything is good. There's a lot of, there's a lot of complicated, you know, code stuff going on there, but it checks that that your files are clean and, and and everything is formatted correctly. So everything looks like everyone is happy. The robots are happy. The humans are happy. Uh, I am, uh, okay, back to you, Edwin. Okay, excellent. So I'll go ahead and share my screen again. And let's see if we have any new notifications. Um, See, interesting that it didn't uh, notify me that that pull request has been improved. This may be uh, something in my settings, but I can always find my pull requests by clicking on the pull requests tab uh, at the top of uh, at the top of the repo, and I can see here that the PR has been reviewed and approved. It can show me who approved it, that all the automated checks have passed, and that this branch has no conflicts with the brace, base branch. Um, and this, now the merge button down at the bottom is green and I can click it. Now, um, before I do this, a quick word about um, 
about rebasing. So in the case that somebody else has done work, uh, has done and merged work on the main branch while you were working on your branch, those branches can be out of date. And in order to keep our uh, commit history clean, our repo requires linear commit history. And so what that means is that each change should be sequential. We shouldn't have changes, you know, leapfrogging each other. And so in the case that somebody else has made changes here, you might see something here that says that rebasing is required um, or that you are out of, out of date with the main branch. If this is the case, um, you will need to rebase. And this is something that is outside of the scope of this tutorial. So we're not gonna cover it today. Um, but if you do see this, you can contact any of the admins on, on the project and we'll help walk you through the rebasing process. Uh, there's also a Git rebasing um, wiki page as well. Um, but generally, you really want to know what you're doing here. And so if you have any questions about this, please come find one of us and we will help you rebase your branch and get it ready for the PR. So in this case, we'll have a few options to merge. Um, in general, we like to do a squash and merge. And what that means is it takes all three, in this case, we had three commits and it takes all three of those commits and uh, combines them into one so that your commit uh, shows up as just one change on the, on the main repo. And if you are following our, our workflow and every commit is just one atomic change to the project, that just makes everything cleaner. So we're gonna go ahead and say, click squash and merge and uh, we can also make a comment here, say like approved and merged. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click squash and merge. It's gonna show me what the commit message is going to be. So it's gonna be say, hey, these are these are the, the commit messages that went into this. And also we had some uh, reviewer contributions as well. I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, confirm and then it will automatically uh, close this, um, it will automatically close once the, once the branch has been merged and it will also, uh, give you an option to delete the branch. I think it does this automatically in the, um, in the ventilator repo, but once it's been committed, there's no reason to keep it because the changes have been incorporated to the main project and you can go ahead and click delete branch. Okay. Um, and because we had this message here, closes number four, if we go to the issue ticket, we'll see that there are no longer any open issues, that issue number four has, um, has been closed. And if we open that up, we'll see that it automatically associated the closure and merging of PR number five with closing this, uh, this ticket automatically. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's it for me, Martin. Any any parting words? Uh, no, I think this this is good. Um, thank you for doing this. This this looks like pretty close to what uh, should get everyone on board uh, on with working the working like this. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And congratulations to our viewers. Thank you for sticking with us. Um, if you've gone through this entire tutorial. Uh, you are now ready to make contributions to our repo. And we thank all of our volunteers very much for, uh, for helping us out in this, in this, uh, in this project. So um, thank you all very much. And we look forward to seeing you on the repo. Thank you.